And welcome back to another episode of Me, You, and Jeju with me, Daryl Coot, and Alexis Joy. How are you doing, Alexis? Not too shabby. How about you, Daryl? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, pre- pretty good. I can't really complain about anything. Uh, the weather is getting nice, as we always like to talk about on the show, finally. Uh, I always feel bad about talking, but yeah, it, it is certainly, we've had a really couple enjoyable couple of days. Wow, I just said couple a few times. <laughs> we had a couple of day, good days of weather, but I think the rain, we got a lot of rain, so that really cooled things down, and now it's like really is springtime, really, really. Yeah, yeah. and I've, been, I've actually been waiting for uh, this particular podcast for probably over a year now. And that's because it was recently Buddha's birthday. And uh-huh. I've been sitting on some Buddha jokes that I've been uh-huh. wanting to tell you about. Yeah, see, I was as soon as you started, I was like, wait, what is he? Where are we going with this? All right. Okay, here's the rule. Sure. You just pick your best one. I, I have three. Oh my god, this so, is horrendous. <laughs> this is okay. horrendous. So <laughs> and on all of these the are mine com- wholly mine okay so okay, okay. what is Buddha- well, i have to laugh then uh, i mean you're going to because they're hilarious uh all right hit me what is buddha's favorite food like i'm so bad with jokes and riddles i feel like this is gonna be so obvious what's buddha's favorite food buddha 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 I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, it's got it's to be a play on words. What is it? Buddha Chige. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not. And half the people aren't going to understand that. Buddha Chige <laughs> is a stew that they have here in Korea. It is um, like army stew. <laughs> And it's made from like uh, army rations, rations. Like Buddha would not be ingesting that into his body. It, but his name's in it. His, his right. name's moving in it. on. So, moving. I hope the next one's even better. What is Buddha's favorite city? <laughs> okay. Um. But, but, <laughs> Buddha she. I don't know. Buddha Pest. Oh. Jesus, <laughs> you almost cursed. I did. I, I did. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, this is the, this is the last one, and this is this is uh, the the worst one. What is Buddha's favorite <laughs> holiday? Well, his birthday, of course. Halloween. Buddha. Okay, I actually <laughs> like that one. Like Buddha. You actually yeah. like that one. And you need to work on your delivery. It needs to be well, like, boo, duh, yeah. you know, like, something like that. Okay, I actually like that one. That was that's the one that I think a bunch of kids would enjoy. Really? Yeah. Wait, you don't you didn't think don't the kids let that would... go to your head? Don't let that go to your head. <laughs> you didn't think the kids would enjoy the other ones? Yeah, the yeah. other two were my favorite. Well, they might the Buddha Jige. They might they might like laugh at it, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna start a stand up routine with the and, and go yeah. with just my whole. Five minute, you know, what do they call it? Like a hard five minutes of just Buddha oh, jokes. Well, listen, you should definitely not quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I, I think that's enough better. I think we, we could get to our, our, our first segment, which is uh, Jeju Dialect Corner with, with Ju Young Han. Excited. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us once again our phenomenal teacher, Ju Young Han. Oh. Yeah. Our gracious teacher who's gracious enough to give us her time to teach us more J2 Satori. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me again. Yeah. Well, (laughs) if you notice, I didn't go into my long diatribe. Oh, my God. Yeah. Thank thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't realize that was um, your I'll just say you're welcome. Um, But part of the reason why is we actually got a lot to, to talk to with you about before we get to our Jeju dialect, which is mm-hmm. look at that, your chapeau, your hat, your lovely oh. hat. Can you, can you talk us a little bit about the, the hat that you are wearing? It's wonderful. Yeah. Save you oh, I, yeah, I love this hat. Uh, it's my favorite uh, cap um, uh-huh. these days. Um, so like a couple months ago, I got a phone call from a company that, produce caps Mm -hmm. they make uh caps for mlb you know the baseball brand i guess so like the company is kind of b 
big and famous. So they wanted to uh, make save Jejubara cap and mm. and um, you know donate the the profit like mm -hmm. after selling uh, this hat. So um, the hat comes in two different colors, one in blue, mm -hmm. which is my favorite color, and the other one in uh, dark green. And they're going to make like really a uh, small quantity. Mm -hmm. So yep, like, that's right. I think uh, one uh, it, each uh, color only hmm, like 150 for each color, I think. Right. So totally, uh -huh. it's like less than 300. Yeah. So um, it's going to be available online, right. like probably sometime next week, uh, next month. Uh -huh. So I'm going to let you know if, you know, you guys want to buy it online yes. or you can buy it on store somewhere. Show them, show them yeah. the side of it, the emblem on the side of it. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty boss. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And so all the money is going to go towards your not your your mm -hmm. NGO. NGO or yes. N yeah, NGO to and then that money will help you continue to clean our beaches. Yes. Yes. That's and also fantastic. we uh -huh. are doing an educational program mm -hmm. starting this Sunday. So, you know, like we are uh, also doing the recycling project as well. Mm -hmm. So like a couple of weeks ago, we sent uh, like the ocean plastic waste that we have been, you know, collecting and storing yeah. at one uh, location. Uh, and it's up to 1.3 tons Whoa. of, yeah, plastic. All of them were, you know, uh, recyclable. So how, how long did it take you to find that? How much? How long uh, did it like to four, that? four months. That's it? Yeah. For one Mm -hmm. that's terrible and uh we um uh, hired like 10 you know like really big truck uh -huh. um uh, to you know send all the uh, waste to the mainland uh, -huh. uh like at a factory that you know washes you know all the salty and mm -hmm. other you know like um things mm -hmm. and then uh i don't know how to say it like crush it yeah you know, like crush it they to, to process the, yeah. it yeah shred shred uh -huh. it yeah and then you know melt it and then they are going to make a little pallet um of plastic so mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, some of them uh is going to be made into toys for disabled kids wow so like vision impaired uh -huh. uh, kids and some of them are going to make uh, to be made into a uh, kidding key ring uh -huh. so we at um so you know for the educational program so we are going to give out uh give a talk on ocean waste problem mm -hmm. and then uh show you know like people whoever you know comes to the uh, education program uh show how the process how to make the key ring because we have like small um machine at the center to make it out of the yeah sheets of plastic or whatever they're gonna yeah make so we use that. use pallet and then you know you you mm -hmm. if you put the pallet into a machine mm -hmm. you, it the machine is gonna melt the little palette and then we right. have yeah the keyring i don't know how to say it whatever and then it's gonna be yeah it makes <laughs> so is this only happening on this coming sunday for no, our, our we... listeners that sunday will be passed by the time this is mm -hmm, published so mm -hmm. how could other people participate in in your program in the future so we we have we have a uh, 12 um uh, time we hmm, 12 times like mm -hmm. two times in may and four times in june and mm -hmm. other times like in september and october mm -hmm. so you can apply on um if you click uh if you go to save jejubada instagram and click the pro profile mm -hmm. link and you can apply but it's all in korean so i'm not sure if you can 
<laughs> you okay. know how to hey, apply. Hey, so, so if you guys yeah. want to apply and you're having trouble mm-hmm. with it because your Korean is yeah. lacking, yeah. contact us at me, you and Jeju, and we will, we'll, we'll get you in touch. We know, we know the yeah. founder, you know, mm-hmm. when I, I was introduced to you because I didn't, uh, full disclosure, we didn't know each mm-hmm. other before this program yeah. before we did this. Um, uh, you were introduced to me as the founder of Sage Jeju Bada. They mm-hmm. clean the beaches. Mm-hmm. That's not what you do. You do so much more than <laughs> just clean beaches. That's just only like a yeah. small fraction of it. Of well, I mean, I it's an integral part of what you do, but it's not what you do. What you do is actually really impressive. When you found, oh, thank you, these like more than a ton of garbage, mm-hmm. you must feel proud to be able to have collected all. But at the same time, you must be disheartened by the fact that you had to collect it all. Well, I think um, at some point, I'm not sure when exactly, but like I don't discouraged by the amount of ocean waste anymore because mm-hmm. if I feel, you know, disheartened or discouraged every single time I see, you know, the amount or, you know, um, how, you know, how much it comes to the Jeju every day mm-hmm. or, you know, um, I don't think I could take it, you know right. what I what I mean. So I have yeah, completely have to yeah, l- like let my people don't let my people don't. What am I talking? Don't do <laughs> myself, you know. Think about the focus on that part, you know. Yeah. Like I try to think about it or focus myself on positive right. things. Like what can I do? What mm-hmm. can I say about this problem, or what we as a nonprofit, you know, organization, what we could do, or what you know we could say to people, you know, things mm-hmm. like that. So that's why I have been, you know, doing more things uh, other than you know, like just picking up trash. You know, like we are mm-hmm. trying to do, uh, uh, you know, like more on, uh, like what, you know we can do to solve the, you know, the problem of mm. disposing, you know, ocean waste mm-hmm. and also, you know, like education. I think education is the key to any problem, you know, mm. like like this, like ocean waste problem as well. So we are trying to focus on that. And yeah, that's what we are doing. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, listeners, if Pay attention to our in, both of our Instagram pages for news and updates on possibly mm-hmm. where people can buy this hat. And <laughs> will it also it'll also be in, in like a few stores too, right? Or oh, just yeah, online? Yeah, couple storage on only on Jeju and also right. mostly on online. I think. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So we'll we'll get that out there to everybody. And we should be. We this is actually taking longer than our normal full segment of Jeju <laughs> dialect. Uh, Alexis is not yeah. here to to mm-hmm. keep us in control. If you guys have mm-hmm. noticed. So, <laughs> what is our Jeju dialect word for today? So I heard you guys interviewed the owner of Magpie. So that is correct. I thought um, it would be really cool to mm. teach you guys something relating to drinking. So here's uh, the p- perfect one. We call a person who drinks a lot, you know, heavy drinker, sulpude. Sulpude. Yeah, sul is alcohol. The, the, uh-huh. This is not a dialect, but you know, it combines with uh, the last part of the word, degi. Degi. So, yeah, so it uh, becomes, uh, yeah, we use it a lot. So it's a dialect. Um, so, so what is pu degi then? What, or degi? Because it kind of sounds like dweji, which things, makes it sound like uh, Like a person, like, for example, run okay. and e-all, you know, yeah. run, runner, you know, mm. like organize. Organization, organizer, uh, organizer, organize, right? Organize, organizer, you know. <laughs> so, oh so it literally just means like soul person, then, yeah, uh, like a like a Degi beer person, is, uh, yeah, yeah. Soul is alcohol, Degi yeah. is person, I think, yeah, right. And poo, mm-hmm. what is so Degi, poo, Degi is the JG. Oh, oh, shoot, 
Here's the thing. I'm curse, like curse really words. confused. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm Why really confused. So sorry. Sur is alcohol. Yeah. Pude. Pude. Uh, ah, pude. right. Pude so and gi. Yeah. Gi is the person. Pude is. <laughs> oh, so let me correct you. Please do, uh, teacher. Sur pude. Not. Uh. Don't add gi. The last uh, syllable. Okay. So, uh. sul pude. Sul pude. Yes. So, so can you use this in a sentence? How would you use this? When would, would you um, use this in a charming way, or would you use this like a insulting wife, way? Yeah, a wife or a husband yeah. comes home from mm -hmm. work, sees yeah. their spouse in front of the TV playing video games with two bottles of mockley in front of them while the child's asleep. This is not a real story, and the child <laughs> and the spouse comes in and goes, "Ah." Yeah. Uh, right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's how you use it. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Can, can, <laughs> can you say the term for us one more time? Sulpude. Sulpude. Yes. Huh. So you would never say this as like a like a like huh ah no, Well, you you, you you can use it as a you know you know like joking way. But right. you can make use it uh, when you make uh, fun of somebody mm -hmm. or um, a little bit scold, like you know, in a scolding way when you yeah. scold somebody, you know, yeah. who's younger than you, and you want to say something uh -huh. if that person drinks a lot, you know. So, now the the question of the hour is, how much would one person have to drink to be called yeah. a sulpude? Well, if well, you have to drink it every day. You have to drink every day oh. and um, like more than one bottle of soju, I guess. That's <laughs> like alcoholic. <laughs> that's exactly what you're just that that's a professional drinker right there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we are really generous about drinking, right? You know that. Sure. So very generous. Yeah. I think it's yeah, super day is alcoholic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so no. so listeners, um, you probably don't won't have to use this word. Day. Yeah, don't boost. <laughs> don't <laughs> be day hajima. No, super day is a noun, right? Yeah, so, so don't I'll... be a super day or something like that. Uh, okay. So, super super day. Thank you so much, Sansanim. Great word. Also, everyone, pay attention to our Instagrams. Instagrams. Instagrams, we got lots of stuff from Save Juji Bada coming up. <laughs> Great. Have a good day. Bye bye. Well, I am really sorry to have missed that lesson. That was a really good one. And I think fairly applicable for, you know, being in City Hall walking around. I think that's a fun insult to be uh yeah. directing at some friends. Oh, or or some uh, unruly Ajishis that you might like. Not to say that, but I think as a foreigner saying that to an agency, like in that sort of way, I think that would be highly suspect. I'm not I, sure. Well, I mean, you wouldn't just be saying that to somebody because uh, randomly it, there would have to be cause for. It. And I think it'd be quite uh, disarming to hear so you, a foreigner, a Wegukin, sure. a non Korean, maybe yeah. say that. You know and change your Look, it's not, like, it'd be one thing to kind of like teasingly say it to like your friends like in a group on saturday night out uh -huh. in the city it'd be a whole another thing to be yelling it at someone in the city <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> you you yeah the, consider this a disclaimer don't <laughs> use at your own peril you know and, and be careful yeah but that yeah. was a good one. sorry to miss that one but uh next time next time yeah and it, i mean it, it was applicable to what we're what, to our interview today uh which, which is yeah which is why i think she she picked it because she knew that we yeah. were we were yeah, i told her who the interview was and i was like could you could you arrange for something that has to do with drinking something uh -huh. some sort of but yeah i'm really excited about our next guest he's been a friend of mine for gosh many years now um even before he came down to jeju i think i had known him up in uh, hbc area um can i go ahead and introduce him sure yeah go please go ahead yeah so this like i said so this is one of the owners of magpie brewery and we've been wanting to have him on for a while just because magpie was so 
instrumental in changing the drinking culture of craft brewery uh, in in Korea. Mm-hmm. Um, they played such a big part about it, and we'll go into it a little bit in in our interview. But uh, I'm just really excited that everyone gets to kind of know a little bit more information about our favorite drinking uh, drink, drinking place on Jeju. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's it is quite um uh, incredible, like the the fact that and then and they're not from here, but how integral it has become to part really? of Jeju culture and Jeju yeah. Island, right? Which is what I was well, very impressed with. In the rep- respective cities, you know, HBC as well. You know, they also have that, but really on Jeju, when when Magpie came down here, it really really changed mm. uh the the. I don't even know how to say it just it started changing the style and, and what could be expected and mm. what was available yeah. and yeah, well, at, at the bars. Yeah. Well, not just like, like it was that, that was also when the JGC, the English town started developing. It's when a lot of more foreigners came to the Island too. Like it, it just was, it's, it was a part of this whole internationalization of the Island too, at the same time, which is kind of, Kind of interesting, and uh, just for he- HBC, is that Hebyong Cha? What what is yeah, HBC? That's a, that's a good thing to to question. I don't even think about that anymore. I never could. Yeah, that's yeah, that's Hebyong oh, uh, Cha. Yeah, but HBC, they were you know they were there first, and uh, that's such a that's such a its own community as well. Much like Jeju has its own community, they also the the restaurants, the businesses there are very tight knit and very close, and the people that live there, just like Jeju. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's yeah, go to the. Inter- Sorry? Yeah. No, go ahead. I was just about to say <laughs> the same thing. I'm really excited for people to hear this one. Okay, let's go. Now with us is Eric <laughs> Moynihan, the co-founder of Magpie Guru, which is where we are fortunate enough to be <laughs> Thanks for today. having us. Hey, Thank no you. So now it's kind of a little introduction for people who may not know about Magpie Guru. It was founded in Seoul in 2012 as a home brewing studio in Itaewon, That's is that right. correct? Yeah. And then you opened your second location here in Jeju in 2014, and you opened the Jeju Brewery, which is where we are currently right. in 2016. Yeah, that's right. And then 2020, in 2018, CNN added that Magpie, is it the coolest brewery <laughs> in Asia? I mean, Did that's really subjective. That? <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. That's my that's opening awesome. question. I've is never... Magpie Brewer the coolest? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all subjective, right? But I mean, I've got more phone calls after that came out from people being like, "Really, really, Eric? really, Eric?" I was just like, "I didn't write I didn't it. I didn't that. say I didn't this. Say this that. is yeah." Oh gosh, but, I don't um, even remember that. That's yeah, one that, hell that of was, a uh, yeah, quite accolade. A yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then the art—it's very small, yeah. and it was like it was a, more of a video. Wasn't it? No. Oh, yeah, they uh, they did some video. Yeah, too. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. job. Pretty interesting. Yeah, it is a pretty cool brewery because like. For some of us who have been here for a little bit longer, mm-hmm. uh, there was it was a dearth of cr- yeah. craft beer Certainly. in Korea, yeah. especially on Jeju, Jeju right? Yeah. So when you guys came here, it was like finally oh, something. It was huge. Cass and <laughs> it was huge. What's the other one? I was going to use the. Well, we had we had Cass Boris. And yeah, yeah. 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 And Boris. We had Brewery. Boris Brewery. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Boris is awesome. Yeah. yeah. When he left, you guys filled a much needed hole. Sure. For I think there was a little bit of a people. gap, right, between he uh, had yeah, he had been gone for maybe world. six or twelve months, something yeah. like that, yeah. and then Magpie kind of yeah. came in. But yeah, we had met him before. Yeah, but his advice was like, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, it's not worth it. It's such a pain, and your landlord's doing that. Yeah, he was such a yeah. He was like an accomplished brewer who had quite won many awards. Mm-hmm. Yep. And every time I went there, he, he was quite uh, curmudgeonly about <laughs> the conditions. But that's kind of interesting because your company has kind of either been upon the wave of craft beer mm-hmm. or in, in Korea or mm-hmm. was kind of the, the starting it. I think, you know, we when we started, there wasn't much like you were saying. And I think that uh, when we first started, like, yeah, it was kind of like a homebrewing studio. It was kind of our, like, research laboratory. <laughs> we made we made a bunch of recipes, and then uh-huh. we brought them to other breweries, like bigger mm-hmm. breweries, to mm-hmm. make them for us. And I think that we sort of showed that, like, the guys who really liked craft beer, it's possible. You can, you do, can this. do this. There yeah. are enough people yeah. that are interested yeah. and want to kind of, like, learn about beer or experience beer, whatever that is. And so, um, yeah, I think that, like, yeah, we kind of showed them that, like, hey, the door's open. Let's, 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 do that. let's all get into when it. When they were making your beers at, at their place, were you then taking them back to your... Yeah, so we couldn't sell working? all the you beers were... that we made in, in the, the sort of studio area mm-hmm. in Haebongchon. Mm-hmm. We couldn't sell any of that beer. That was just for, like, recipe development. Just for and, fun. And, and, for okay, okay. Um, and then, yeah, so we 
build a recipe we really liked, bring it out to their factory, brew it with them, hopefully tweak it to get it mm -hmm. where we wanted it to mm -hmm. be. It was never, it's not easy and brewing is, you know, 50% art, 50% mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes into it there. Um, and yeah, and then they'd brew it there and then they'd deliver it back to us and we could That's sell that. That's really there. cool. Yeah. And that was what was allowed by the government at that time. Yeah, so at the time, actually, just as we got our business license, um, the, let's say the week before, the month before, mm -hmm. they changed the law to mm -hmm. say that originally you couldn't um, actually, uh, you couldn't distribute the beer outside of the locations, mm -hmm. you know? So if you were a brewery, you could sell it only at your location. Mm -hmm. And then they changed the law saying, oh, you can now distribute the beer around the country. Mm -hmm. Anybody who wants to sell your beer can sell can your sell beer. beer. And then we basically could open our Magpie Brewing Company. They could make our recipe and sell it back to us. And so, uh, just based on that, you talking about, this is a question that everyone has been asking around town, when are the cans going to be able to be sold at any well, CU? Well, we can or sell them at the you CU. Want? You can. The problem is that uh, they only want to sell them at four for ten. Uh, <laughs> and so, we, it's too cheap. The, the price Abs point yeah. is like, we have to sell them our cans at a dollar sixty, like a okay. tiny quick one, is what we have to sell them to. Okay. And we don't make a beer that can be done that well. That's actually, I mean, to, to be honest, that's only... That's the main hurdle, but the mm -hmm. second hurdle is that they don't do cold chain distribution. So, what does that mean? Um, it's basically cold chain means the beer from the brewery is always kept cold from until it gets to your class. Oh. So oh. Um, we don't do filtration, we don't have pasteurization, anything like that. And so the beer quality That's can change deal. drastically. So when you go to a, a 7-Eleven, a CU Mart, the basically they have in their back room stacks of beer that's sitting there, maybe next to the exhaust Ex fan, yes. maybe oh, on their loading okay. dock. You don't really know how they're treating the beer. That's and then so um, it goes into the fridge after that and then gets cold for when you buy it. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you'll go to like, I've been to like Humdock and the, the beer will be warm coming out of the fridge because people are buying, <laughs> buying it so, it so much quickly, yes. that like they're only loading the warm beer mm -hmm. into the fridge. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, since they don't have that, that's actually a pretty huge issue. That is uh, a big issue. Yeah. Okay, well and that's so, an answer that also, everyone's going to be wondering. Yeah. Four cans from Man on is obsolete nowadays, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, four for 11. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. going up. Well, inflation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it got a little too We've popular. Had, I mean, I do think in the next year, I would anticipate that you will see a change. I think that I also, uh, we've had some conversations with people, three for 10, three for, three for 11 small cans, mm -hmm. the 355 cans, mm -hmm. two for 11 mm -hmm. has been a conversation. And so I think Different that things. will start to open mm. up a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I think customers are kind of tired. I think at the four for 11 prices, you're not seeing anybody really breaking the mold on making really great beers. They're just good beers that are out there. And at that price point, you just can't really do too much else. Yeah. I think there was such a, especially back when all the, the beers were first coming and then the four for 10s, you know, when they were all happening, it was so exciting because yeah, you had sure. never seen mm -hmm. any of these beers, especially on Jeju. Mm -hmm. yeah. You had never seen any of the beers, yeah. but I had to ask about the cans because we were talking mm -hmm. about the distribution, but go, how many, how many owners are there of Magpie? Um, it's kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. We started off mm -hmm. with, uh, there was, uh, basically there was five of us. And the, you uh, guys were all good friends. And all friends, yeah, yeah. from the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, it was kind of, what is it, there was three of us that started, and that mm -hmm. was uh, me, Jason, and Tiffany. Mm -hmm. We were homebrewing together, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where we came up with the idea of what we wanted to do. And then we said, well, let's talk to friends about investing mm -hmm. in opening the shop. Mm -hmm. And basically, Hassan was the first person uh -huh. to talk to, and Hassan said, don't talk to anybody else. Like, you <laughs> don't need to talk man. to anybody I'm else. Man. I'm your I'm man, your and man. like, we're going to get this uh -huh. done, kind uh -huh. of thing. And so. Okay. We started from there. Um, at one point, um, Jason sold a little bit of his shares to another mm -hmm. friend. Okay. And so um, uh, Sydney, I don't know if you ever met Sydney. She's awesome. So. Um, okay. And so Sydney became a part owner. She's really minority. Okay. Um, and then when we moved down to Jeju, the Orario Group was our partners, yeah. but weren't owners. They were just okay. partners on the space. Okay. Okay. And then. Um, we actually uh, had a long conversation with SPC, Paris Baguette, tried okay. to buy Magpie. Um, oh, I didn't know and, that. Um, hey, you got the scoop uh, here. We said no. <laughs> uh, we ended up walking away from it, but we went to Arario and said, look, like we do need cash. Um, yeah. Running the brewery is way more cash intensive than we thought. Mm -hmm. And so um, we need to get a little bit of a, a cash injection mm -hmm. to kind of mm -hmm. keep the business going mm -hmm. and, and where we want to go with it. And they said, yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to be a part of it. So they came in as an investor yeah. afterwards. And that's it. There's no other investors. That's, yeah. yeah. That was a really cool, Aria was really cool for the Tap Dong area, right? Yeah. Their investment in it and their what they were trying to do, especially yeah. the owner. He was he, really very interesting. Interesting, <laughs> like, awesome group of people. Really, really. Yeah, they really lucky. tried so much down in the tap on yeah. to make that and yeah. and they did a successful job yeah might i say yeah definitely yeah. so what was like the, the beer that you made your first beer or the one that you were like okay you know what 
It's this our, is a cash cow. Our pale ale. Yeah. Uh, I mean, our pale ale is still the number one selling beer we have, mm-hmm. despite the fact that it, it's like we based it loosely off of Sierra Nevada pale ale uh, mm-hmm. because it's well, it's the beer that's my go to beer back mm-hmm. home. We said. At the time, when we started brewing through Cabrew, they said, you can make a beer. Um, you can't make 10 beers. You can't make, even make three beers. You can make a beer. <laughs> and so we're like, well, what beer well, do we want to drink is... every day? <laughs> right. It's pale ale. So okay. we kind of, we tweaked it a little bit. We, you know, we only have so many ingredients we can get here. We only have so many hops we could get here and mm-hmm. everything like that. So mm-hmm. we tried to make it our own a little bit, but then also kind of uh, hamstrung by the ingredient mm-hmm. off, uh, that was available. I remember that. And so, um, yeah, so our pale ale. But we, the, the recipe's been adjusted a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit where, you know, every time a new brewer comes in, they want to tweak it a little little bit but there's also when I'm saying like well no it tastes a little too different but it's like a nostalgia like yeah, I, yeah, the, yeah the original yeah. beer probably tasted disgusting um, <laughs> if we drank it today yeah. but for the time it was so hoppy and so rich and so much flavor that it broke the mold yes. of what was being made yeah but I'm sure that today's pale ale and then like the pale from 2012 has probably evolved so much you continue to tweak the beers as like even like they're canned here before us yeah but does that mean they're they're finished they're complete or do you can um, to be I like would that? say probably 90% I don't think most people wouldn't notice the tweaks yeah. mm. um, sometimes there's different yeast strains that will like have to kind of adjust or something like that like actually the porter has had a few different yeast strains but, mm. but it's such a small difference that I'd say 90% wouldn't notice the difference. Okay. Maybe if you're a diehard Porter fan, you'd be like, oh, it's a little bit more fruitier than it mm-hmm. was before. But that is like a, it's like a coffee nuance, you know, on like, you know, um, yeah, it's not a Just, super, super. And you'd have to probably be drinking it on a regular basis sure. to really. Sure. Not that. The Porter is my favorite. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. It's my absolute oh, it's, favorite. Yeah. 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 Well, I, you know, even the fl- flavors of beer changes. Like if I'm hungry. You know, like oh, the yeah. way you appreciate the flavor of beer is different than when you're uh-huh. full, you know, or uh-huh. if you had spicy food. Uh-huh. It all kind of plays into that. But uh-huh. um, yeah, we're trying to go in for this overall arc where it doesn't really feel that different. Yeah. But. So in 2014, you came to Jeju. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, that was the Arario guys. Um, okay. The group from Arario, they had started to develop Tap Dong, like mm-hmm. you were talking about. Mm-hmm. And um, they were really keen on having a beer brewery in Tap Dong. So they're like a development corp- company? Yeah. They're, they're, so they're a family-run business that they're, they basically um, are property investors. But they, uh, they're they really famous in Chunan. And so oh, the Chunan area is where their home base is. Okay. And they had property there. That property was adjacent to the, um, what is it, like the bus depot mm-hmm. in Chunan. Mm-hmm. And so it was like a, a hub. And so oh. they built um, a huge building and they licensed the Shinsuke Department Store name. Um, right. Oh, so that Shinsuke okay. Department Store is the only non like operated by Shinsei, De- Shinsei Department Store. Oh, that's really interesting. So they licensed that. Um, that and then from there, life. they started developing on other real estate, but they're they're almost more famous for being art collectors. That's what I was. So that's it. They're, yeah. He's uh, C. Kim, the, the founder and um, uh, sort of creator of the Arario Group. He um, he's listed as like probably top hundred contemporary art collectors globally, um, at least in Asia. Such he an intriguing focuses a, man. a lot on yeah. Asian um, yeah. Asian artwork as well too, huh. and like getting this new contemporary mm-hmm. from all over Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. And he tasted um, your beer, and he's like, "I want to add that to my collection." Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, what's really cool is so they also invest <laughs> in like small yes. artists, right? Like they do have like an agency for artists, mm-hmm. but that's kind of the way they treat Magpie as mm-hmm. an investor. They're like, "Look, this you is guys do art. this and." We don't want to tell yeah. you what to do. We send them, you know, a, a yearly financial statement. Mm-hmm. But as long as everything's going well, it's more about like, what else can we yeah. help you with? Is there anyone, any introductions you need, anything yeah. you guys need to do? They've been super, like the best investors you could ask for. And really smart on their end, it, to be honest, because when Magpie, your old building opened and tapped on, man, the influx of people to sure. that area, which was previously once just, you know, young kids and, and n- nothing was happening, yeah. you know, outside that little area where kids were running around yeah, but yeah. it was a really smart move and then that you know then the museum sure and then the you yeah. know it really really yeah. good yeah, yeah magpie definitely. really when magpie came down things just started it, it became less con- i don't see i don't want to say that but less <laughs> well it, it, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. It, was, it just it was a big impact for jeju sure. and it things started looking a little bit different on the island there was also just be beer at the time yeah yeah, was, yeah uh government run yeah, yeah. and then it's well, gone yeah, yeah pretty much now yeah we i think they yeah. still have a facility they sitting do. somewhere yes yeah, somewhere empty probably yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Sure. which so, is a shame but yeah. uh, it's I, I like to say this word a lot but when it comes to, to beer it's interesting to see that your company when we were talking about before it was widening this wave mm-hmm. but at the same time that part of that wave was like this multiculturalism that was going on at the same time yeah yeah and is uh, so i guess what, what my question kind of is is 
what of your beer is like Western and what of it is Korean? Yeah, it's it's really interesting because I mean, it's something, I don't want to say we battle with it. We think about it a lot as like what makes our beer Korean and Mm. we do some export. We go to a lot of like international events and everything Uh like that, but it's like, you know, my pale ale is made with German and Danish malts and American hops. Like, what about that is Korean? Mm-hmm. And also, like, when we're deciding what our new beers are going to be, it's hard because, you know, the Korean market is not, it's not America. It's not New York. It's not California that knows about all this craft beer. Mm-hmm. Denmark was crazy for craft beer, too. It's not one of these craft beer hubs like that where there's a ton of people that are clamoring for really innovative <laughs> You know, we we sell more of the sort of like more simple styles where mm-hmm. they're simple and drinkable mm-hmm. and clean. And mm-hmm. we try to have a few experimental things that are in there. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like it's Korean in the fact that it's it's made for Koreans. You know, like it's made for a Korean population. Okay. We don't necessarily like try to dumb things down. It's more just about exposure where we're saying like, oh, we're choosing these beer recipes. We're making them where we're saying like, hey, these are classic styles. These are things that are really awesome. Try it. Try this try and see it. what it is. And yeah. we also, I mean, Ethan and I, Ethan, our head brewer, you know, we like classic simple styles. Styles mm-hmm. more than we like the new trendy styles, mm-hmm. um, but our younger brewing team wants more of the new trendy stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's a nice balance actually that we yeah. get from that. Yeah, we do try to use Korean ingredients and things like that whenever we can. But you're not making like dangkong, like udo dangkong. Yeah, uh, I mean, or we have like. used we've we've used it before. Our we had a beer called the Little One, and it was like a peanut oh, yeah, brown ale that, that we made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so we try to like, oh, what could we do to use this in a way? But we don't try to just like you know ride too heavily on that. Right. Where mm-hmm. it's like almost like cliche. Mm-hmm. I mean, we get asked every beer we make for someone off the island is always like, "Can you add orange? Can you use <laughs> right. orange?" I was and we're just, like, "That was gonna be my next." I didn't want to yeah, say because you, you may actually be working uh, on well, a tangerine beer. Like we do. Beer. I, I mean, I like make, I like using tangerine beer. Citrus and beer works really well. It really so does. I'm not against it. It's just when it's like every request, you're like, "Yeah, you're like, well, we, we don't can wanna, do something else." We don't want to you know, be like, There are into other that. ideas yeah. we yeah. can do. So, um, but it is. I could see why people would want to request that because it is a uniquely Jeju thing. That's why we have and it is tasty. Makgeolli, Jeju makgeolli. Gum your tangerine yeah, in sure. it. Yeah, it's yeah. not very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not very well, good. I mean, I think, you know, we actually, it's funny because we struggle using tangerine in beers. Is like, well, how do you use the ingredient? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the fresh are obviously amazing, but mm-hmm. almost all of the sort of processed goods you get from it are terrible. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I don't know if it's just that no one's processing them in a way mm-hmm. that balances for beer, mm-hmm. or you end up with these like either really kind of chemically or cloying or just not a great flavor that expresses how great the, the tangerine the is. The actual are, taste or, is, right. Or the halibong or anything right, like right, that. Right, right, right. So, yes. yeah, we've been, we, we spend a lot of time thinking about that and trying to find ways to use it mm-hmm. in ways that are good. And unfortunately, the best way we found is we have like six juicers in the brewery mm-hmm. and it's just all hands on deck juicing oranges to get like fresh <laughs> fruit. Oh but God. it's like, <laughs> Yeah. Can you just oh, everybody sad. line up? Yeah, this your is what hands we're doing are all today. like wrinkled Fruity and like, and like, yeah, like you smell. You smell like tangerines for the best. You mentioned this is something that you know. I know you fairly well now mm. for many years. One yeah. thing I didn't realize is that you do do collaboration. I, I knew this a while ago, yeah. but when did that start? That you were started making collaborations with other organizations and other businesses. Um, I mean, it's always kind of been something You've that always, we do okay. that, because okay. I mean, I think um, you know we try to say like the Magpie core values are like culture, community, craftsmanship. Mm-hmm. That's what we try to like rely on a lot. So we always are looking at like you know, like small fashion designers that are Korean fashion designers that mm-hmm. we do like VIP sweatshirts mm-hmm. for our team mm-hmm. like every Christmas. That's mm-hmm. one of the things we do. Um, Vans, the skateboard company. That was a they, cool one, yeah. Um, yeah, they called us and said, we've got these events mm-hmm. coming up. Do you think you could make us a custom beer? Mm-hmm. So we do some like beer collaborations, which is really traditional. Every brewery does collaborations okay, with other breweries. Okay. We've always actually focused more on the non-beer collaborations. Mm-hmm. We do those too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of what's a good example. We did a beer called Torak Torak, which is like, you know, tap you on the shoulder. Mm-hmm. We did it for a mental health association oh. um, where uh, we collaborated with... Um, Issei uh, is a clothing brand here. They're American guys, second generation. Okay. They kind of made here like, these clothes that are based off of like Korean fabrics or Korean dyeing That's techniques. That's cool. And then a tattoo artist that did like the designs. We made this jacket that was like all That embroidered. jacket was so was badass. Pretty awesome. Yes. Yeah. And then we, yeah. we made a beer that went with it and then yeah. all the proceeds from the beer okay. went to this um, uh, uh, mental health association. And, and when you, do, prevention when you do beers like that, you really just give them the beer. You, you really can't it, it find depends. it here in the um, house? Or? Uh, usually, I mean, we usually do them as small batches. Okay. So like that's a one batch. I think the Torak Torak sold out in like two or three weeks. Jeez. It sold out really quickly. Oh, that's cool. Um, uh, we do also stuff though like for like Nine Bridge Golf Course. Mm-hmm. We make a beer for them where right. that's not so much collaboration. We kind of call it more like OEM where or like white label where 
Actually, it's not really white label because it's not like a beer we make that they can stick their label on. Right. We sit down with them. What do you want but the beer to be? But it's their house beer. And we make it. And it just says like made by Magpie right. like, okay. on the barcode. Okay. It's not really like okay. a Magpie. It's like your commission X. to make the beer for them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so okay. we started most of that actually during COVID because it helped us fill volume that wasn't being distributed to like all the bars and mm, restaurants that mm, normally carry mm-hmm, our products. Mm-hmm. And actually it carried us through quite well. Like Good. We made very few layoffs. We had to do a few things where we um, people would like sort of stay home for 70% pay for a yeah. week or two. Yeah. But um, we really didn't lay off too many people. That's good. I mean, part-time staff got reduced, but um, yeah, we, we didn't have to let go of too many people. That's good. So yeah. COVID, you were able to kind of ride that wave as uh, much yeah, as... Yeah, it was yeah. challenging and yeah, hard. I and um, I mean, we came out of it with a lot of debt that we had to pay off. But um, I mean, last year we, we kind of, it's, you know, we got lucky in the fact that before COVID, we were actually in kind of like a pausing. We were trying to slow the boat down a little bit because we were overspending on a mm-hmm. lot of stuff. We mm-hmm. said, look, let's just, you know, simplify everything. So luckily that was actually a time very to, big time. Timed well. And then, yeah, when COVID came out, it was just kind of like, okay, well, luckily yeah. we're down to like foundations now okay. that COVID was okay for us. So I'm curious because um, I had to write a lot about pandemic, especially yeah. when it started. So it started in December, 2019. Mm-hmm. When did it start to affect your business directly? Hmm. I don't know exactly. Um, I would say it was a little bit, I mean, it it was kind of like one of those things where it was definitely a slowing down because people Mm. weren't sure how serious we had to take it. Was it a big deal or not? When the government restrictions started coming in, I mean, that was just like a hard stop. And all of a sudden things were really... Especially for Seoul. Yeah. And then we just kind of like... We were living our best life down here. We, we, I remember seeing on your Instagram, hey, everybody, we're now on this curfew, Magpie, you know, all the restaurants. But here, down here, we were just like, well... Well, I mean, Jeju kept us afloat. Like, I mean, honestly, like, even besides that slowing down, if it wasn't for Jeju, like, Magpie would have, I mean, I don't know if we would have had to close, close, but but at least it would have been more drastic measures we would have had to take. But yeah, we kind of like rolled through the through the pandemic using Jeju as and Vans day. was the Vans collaboration was for the rest. Correct me if I'm wrong. There was something you did that was giving money back to restaurants. Um, or, oh, what did we do, do you, for that do you one? Well, that, that was um. So they did a, 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 um, an event that was called um. Oh, what was it called? Foot the bill. Foot was the their bill. Program. So what the they shoes, did is they right? we made a custom magpie design shoe. That's right. And then basically, if you bought that shoe online, yeah. Uh, half the money came yeah. back to Magpie yeah. um, for it. So it was okay. a nice thing. I forget, we sold like five or 600 pairs yeah, of shoes or something amazing. like that. So it was really cool. One of the things I really like about Jeju, not just the beer, but the, like you, you said, it's the community. Mm-hmm. And then the, what was the third? The community? Culture. Culture. And one of the, one of the, I've always just really adored about Magpie is the culture part of it. Yeah. Like the posters and the, and the, yeah. the events and the art that well, sort of seems to tie into Magpie. You know, so even before we had cans of beer mm-hmm. where it makes sense you have to put something in the can, mm-hmm. we tried to make the posters, the posters because so cool. it kind of like it m- makes the beer have a little bit more of a like a character mm-hmm. or a little bit more mm-hmm. of sort of a, a story. Mm-hmm. You know, you can tell, well why did we make this beer? Well the you know like uh, for instance, uh Dongne Chingu, Old Pals Pilsner that we mm-hmm. make. That beer it's like yeah. the the idea is that it's like it's like your it's like an old friend, mm-hmm. you know, like everyone knows Pilsner style, German Pilsner. Mm-hmm. And so we just make it our kind of twist and make it something where, yeah. you know, the story of it being like it's always gonna be around. Right. It's, it's that old friend, right. you know. So that, that was leading to actually something that I wanted to talk to you about, which is where does a beer come from? Mm-hmm. We were talking about ingredients before. Do you start with the ingredients? Do you start or with idea? Um, with the idea? Do you start with an image? Like uh, how does usually it? concepts. Sometimes we'll have like a name that kind of comes up that we're like Oh, what beer matches this name? <laughs> That's cool. But yeah, not, yeah. Okay. it's not often. Usually the name comes after where we say, this is what we're going to try to yeah, do for yeah. the beer. And, and that's um, where your head brewer really comes in, right? 100%. With the ideas and that's yeah. why they... Yeah. And I mean, uh, coming up with ideas, but also just the, ex- I mean, without Ethan executing <laughs> yes. those ideas is impossible. You would be, yeah, yeah. And he seems to have like just, uh, he really, he's quite talented. Like I, awesome. when he, when you guys yeah. hired him, it was really fun yeah. to see and like. who is your beer meister? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, uh, Ethan, Katz, Ethan Katz, uh-huh. is, um, he comes from uh, the U.S. We we took him from Washington, D.C. is where mm-hmm. he was based, but he's kind of from <laughs> upstate New York. You kidnapped him, just like, bag over the head. Come and on, Ethan, let's get over um, here. No, we, there's like a kind of international job posting board for mm-hmm. brewing positions, and so mm-hmm. we posted up on there, and he replied, and we interviewed a few candidates, but mm-hmm. Ethan kind of, I mean, it was lucky because uh, I had actually drank beer from the breweries he worked oh, at, cool. so I kind of had an idea of uh, like what, what they make, okay. and being like, oh yeah, like these yeah. are definitely beers that yeah. are kind of our vibe and our style. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he c- came over, and 
yeah, it's always a little bit of like a getting settled where yes. you've got to kind of like go through and clean the cobwebs mm -hmm. out and sort of find and the new things you can and, do yeah, and, yeah. and tweak things. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the core lineup doesn't change too much, just like some subtle Which is tweaks. Nice, right? But then the new rotating beers really kind of takes his culture. Yeah, and that's kind of cool. Like what what has been your favorite of his beers? Mm, that's a good question. I really, because he, uh, he's just made some really um, good ones. The beer that stands out the most is we did the Cancelled Flights, which was the sort of like, oh, yes. that was a collaboration with some breweries in Vietnam. Right. And uh, so we used like a lot of Vietnamese herbs and things yeah. in a hazy IPA. That was He really will cool. slap me for this because oh, he, yeah? he doesn't like hazy IPAs. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the can on that was really, yeah, I was like, really see. good that yeah. we make that. Um, I mean, Bring Spring is also one oh. of my favorite beers every year we make. I like Saison's a lot. People wait for that one. Everyone's like, it's time, it's time. Oh, yeah. Did Now, the Ma I'm going to say this wrong. The Mai the Malbuck? Malbuck, Did yeah. is, is this year's, is it uh, much of a change or is it pretty um, much the same? I... Uh, it's a big difference, I think, than the is previous it? years. Okay, yeah, I'm excited. For sure. um, That's why we're doing it here today, so I can have a sip nice, of that. Nice. It's good. It's like, I mean, it's such kind of a boring beer style, just mm. malty, and okay. it doesn't have a oh, lot really? of like nuance. I think compared to a lot of the beers, yeah, yeah, make, yeah, yeah. But it's okay. also so easy to drink. And yeah, it's so good. Like it's just yeah. so so easy, so simple. It's a it's a popular one, and the old art for that too is. Yeah. Well, we let's take a little bit of break, and then if you don't mind, let's talk a little bit about your art. Sure. So back from the break. Yeah. Um, Talking about the art, one mm -hmm. of the coolest things about it is I think, it, it, and I'm not sure the newer people on Jeju really understood that the old school people, all my friends that have left Jeju, their houses are decorated with magpie. Like so, throughout the world now, yeah, sure. you know, it's hanging on walls in international schools it's, and the states. Yeah, yeah it's really funny. Art. Actually, a friend of ours, a brewer from uh, you know Left Hand out of Colorado, yeah, my, he just sent me a yep. text message. They're in Belgium, and there's a magpie sticker Stop. on some old Belgian brewery wall, that. and he's just like, "Can you believe?" This. Yeah. And like, it is yeah. really hard to yeah. believe because we it's, never expected this to come, like, that Magpie would get would to you, do this, you know? Well, like, it's funny you bring up left hand. I have a left hand bumper sticker on my oh, car cool. here in Jeju. Cool. I used to pour beer for them in Colorado, oh, awesome. like at like the little local um, festivals. Yeah, they would be in, yeah. uh, they would always just say, Alexis, you want to pour? And I'm like, you know I do. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they're such yeah. cool guys. Really so, awesome. yeah, but your art, I, it absolutely. I mean, people have it. It's not even just like tacked to walls. <laughs> Wait, people have this art. Are you art the thing. artist? No, 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 no. We <laughs> Um, I Eric's wish like, I could oh, say. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. We, um, uh, we've gone through a few generations of art, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. um, the original logo Different was done and... by um, Oh Hyun Kwan, who mm -hmm. does uh, Guta Form as his stu design studio in Seoul. Um, and then he did the, the original logo, original fonts and stuff like that. Then um, uh, Kevin Beneshek came in and he was, it was called Mute House and now it's uh, Okio Champions. Mm -hmm. And um, he did our art for a while and we had a, like the original style was like a very screen printed, mm -hmm. originally maybe for the first year of Magpie, every poster was actually hand screen printed. Oh, I didn't one know that. Jesus. Um, but then we had to move to like a printing because we needed yeah. too many of them. Yeah. Um, so how important are these posters to, because uh, like, right. I, 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 I mean, I think it's part of our DNA. I think it's a really special thing of Magpie because I think it helps people understand craft beer like the idea that yes you maybe had a Maybach before but you never had a Magpie Maybach mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. different and that's why craft beer is so special that each brewery even though you say like oh I love pale ales but every one of them is slightly different it has a slightly right. different tweak to it yeah of and course the art kind of helps you sort of uh, understand it or, or yeah. what do you want to say like almost um it comes second nature you just you you recognize it without recognizing it so oh, I like that what is your favorite beer is it the I mean, I drink our pale ale more than anything else that we make, uh, right. probably, followed closely by the Dongne Chingu, the Pilsner. Mm -hmm. um, but I, that's because I know usually if I'm drinking beer, I sit down and I drink a few of them. Um, yeah. If I'm having a one off, like, I, I like everything. Everything we make is usually because we say, that sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, it just depends. You know, yeah. like, my fridge is full of everything because, yeah, it depends on if you I'm sitting down to session. <laughs> yeah, well, true. But, um, yeah, like, if I'm sitting down to, like, have a bunch of beers, then usually uh -huh. I'll stick with more classics. Yeah. Right. If we're sitting down to have one or two or Tiffany, I'll split a can, yeah. then, like, I'll try the more experimental, yeah. the bigger hoppy the, ones yeah. and stuff like that. The porter for me is my favorite, but I can't have more than, like, two because they're, sure. they're so heavy. They're yeah. So it's a, it's yeah. a meal. Yeah. It's, it's a meal in itself, it's, yeah. The IPA has more calories than the porter does, actually. There's more sugar, oh. there's more body in that beer, but the sort of like darkness, the richness of yeah, it yeah, makes that, it feel yeah. like that. Yeah. We try to say the porter is more like an iced Americano than it is like <laughs> like a chocolate milkshake uh -huh, or something like uh -huh. that. But um, that's just to kind of help people envision, you know, and I mean in Korea, what Amer ice Americano is probably the best selling drink yeah. in the country. <laughs> so getting that connection is, is you know, usually uh, Yeah. Strong. So I'm not sure if this question is applicable, but what mm. would be like, for you as a, 
a brewery, yeah. what would be like the holy grail or like the Moby Dick of well, a beer that you'd like uh, to make? What we're what I'm, we're trying to get to, and it's hard because we spend so much time making these core beers, is like we really want to make these what they call like mixed fermentation, mixed culture fermentation. So what it would be is you use sort of like different types of bacteria, different types oh. of yeast to kind of get these like really nuanced and complex beers. A lot of the time they're open fermented or they use wild yeast. So we'd like to kind of get these this like open fermentation tank where it's like basically Jeju wild yeast that inoculates this beer. So it gives it sort of like a really interesting locality kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They tend to be kind of funky, barnyardy, sour, oh. really complex. And then what often people will age them on, on, on fruits and things like this. So um, it's kind of a very Belgian tradition. Like you got to go out into the forest, like gotcha wall and like hunt down yeast or, or something? Yeah, I mean, what you would do is you take the beer and you let it cool down over like, let's say overnight in okay. some wild, some area that's got wild yeast. It could be here, just in like mm -hmm. the orange Wait, fields or anything like that. Wild, like what, huh? They, I mean, basically like, um, you know, makgeolli is a little bit complex because you use the nuruk for it, but it's basically, it's, it's a mixed fermentation culture mm -hmm. that's basically wild from a location. And so it's How kind of like, instead of sort of collecting it and then right. adding it to the beer, you basically just leave the beer open and that wild yeast blows oh, on top of it and cools and the yeast survives. You is know, that, stuff like that something you can, f this is so ignorant. Is no, that just okay. something I mean, you yeah, like, can Even in the beer industry, it's a very special yeah. thing. Yeah. Can you just find that? I mean, it's everywhere, that... it's everywhere. Like, okay. I mean, we, uh, so we work with, there's a local yeast lab. Uh, I say local, they're in Seoul, or they're not in Seoul, they're, they're just outside of Seoul. Mm. But uh, they're yeast new, lab. they're just getting started. But cool. they basically came down and took cultures from around like my house and around oh, the neighborhood. Okay. That and is that. wild. And um, we haven't made like a specific beer with it yet. Yeah, we okay. will at some okay. point. But, so you can um, have beers based on different neighborhoods based on the yeast you have. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you might find like um I think even here there was different yeast from the brewery and different yeast at my house so oh, sure. you can get it from different neighborhoods and things like that That's some of it will make disgusting beer a, like some yeah. of it won't make good okay. beer but do you just like is it just in the air it's in the air everywhere yeah um I mean for instance like you know natural wines like oh. part of that is the fact that they don't add anything to it they just basically mm. like either leave the grapes or crush the grapes right. and the natural yeast is what ferments that okay um, is this something other breweries are already experimenting with um, or is this uh, really there's a new? I mean mostly I think Soul Gypsy is a brewery up in Okay. Soul that's okay. awesome and is really focused on making those beers and then Wild Wave from um, Wild Busan. Wave. And they make some really oh, cool yeah. beers. They do some of that as well. Okay. Uh, Wild Wave's one of mine. I mean, I'm probably, I'm probably leaving someone out and they're going to call me and be like, you hey. can give us a shout out too. <laughs> but um, those are the two guys that come to mind most mm -hmm. that are doing it. But I mean, yeah. it's really interesting, cool yeah. process. But it just takes time and dedication and a lot yeah. of effort from the team to kind of manage those things. So it's a lot. Um, hey? Yeah, we'd like yeah. to get there and we will get there. Maybe one point. day when you start expanding yeah. in the, yeah, if ever happens. Do you think of getting into Mockley or other types of alcohols? Cause um, we've considered it. It's, again, it's one of those things where it's just, it's time, effort, and money. You know, right. you we, want to put there and we don't have a lot of space yeah. and like, yeah, the beer is still growing. Yeah. So it's kind of like, if we do that, it's kind of, it takes away from other things. And yeah. so, I mean, bef I think before we get into making other alcohol or Mockley or anything like that, I think there's a lot to do in beer still, mm. um, but we'll see. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know my, I when I'm like, no, you can't go into Mockley before you make me a cider, or before you make me like a, a sparkly, seltzer, a seltzer, seltzer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Eric, you brought up um, one of the other things that I really enjoy with craft brewery, having lived in Denver and Colorado, which yeah. is, you know, such Huge a hub. hub. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. one of the things I really like about Korea is you guys are all really good friends. All, not all, I'm not going to say all because now yeah. there's like so many more. Yeah, but certainly, the certainly. the different breweries throughout. I mean, you guys get together as often as you can to certainly drink well, together and, and um, talk and yeah. share. There's kind of like I mean, there's a big group of foreign brewers mm -hmm, here. Um, mm -hmm. I think that you know the foreigners definitely led the first wave mm -hmm. of the of the of the craft beer scene in Korea, mm -hmm. and now the Korean. I would say probably the the best new breweries are the Korean kids that are coming yep. up and yep. guys that are making yep. new stuff. And so, yep. um, yeah, we probably, everyone's busy enough in the pandemic. It's been a couple of years where that's kind of faded a little bit, yeah. but we definitely do get together. We yeah. get phone calls, we do collaborations. Yeah. I mean, Soul yeah. Gypsy, we were, um, when he was building his brewery, I was messaging him being like, oh man, I'm so jealous of these new uh -huh. oak fermenters you're uh -huh. putting, it's so cool. Uh -huh. And he said, hey, I just put a beer in one, when it releases, I'll send you a box. Oh, and so he awesome. brought me a box on our 10th anniversary yeah, yeah. party. Oh, that's so awesome. yeah, we do a lot of that kind of yeah. stuff where, where there's there's that geek beer, guys were just mm -hmm. down here and mm -hmm. our brewing team met them, we're touring them around a little mm -hmm. bit to show them Jeju. And so, yeah, there's definitely camaraderie. Like there's a little bit sometimes of, of um, I, I use the word like frenemies. Yeah. Like yeah. there is some competition because the, the craft beer be. 
like the industry isn't growing as much as it feels like it's growing and the, the convenience stores mm -hmm. is growing, mm -hmm. actual tap handles, bars that mm -hmm. want to have craft beer on tap aren't growing super fast. So, right. you know, maybe it uh, for a new brewery to come to Jeju, they're probably going to take a few of my tap handles mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. that's okay. I'm not angry about it, mm -hmm. but there's always a little bit of competition sure. where can we keep those? Sure. Are we getting new ones and sure. how does that work? But I mean, For that's the most part, yeah. that's industry. That, I mean, that, yeah, that's, that's any market. Happen, you yeah. know? So, what is next? for Magpie, now that we're coming out of the pandemic, knock on wood, hopefully. Yep. Events, 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 mm -hmm. events, yeah. events. <laughs> uh, definitely putting a focus back on our retail, I think. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, wholesale's growing and that's mm -hmm. coming back mm -hmm. and I think that that's gonna be natural. So the team's really busy growing our wholesale again, but we're gonna try to put a, a big renewed effort back into our existing retail as first step. Uh, events and some sort of just like, what do you wanna say, like, social planning, doing more stuff mm -hmm. during the week where we want to try to start like a, a movie get night out here. Get people out again, yeah. right? And so, and I mean, yeah, I mean, people are itching to get out Jesus. and do something. So give them a reason to come, to come to out to Magpie Brewery on a Wednesday, you know, something like that. Beautiful location yeah. and yeah. And so yeah. that's kind of the next okay. main step. Um, and then after that, uh, you know, I'm not sure, getting back into some collaborations mm -hmm. and some other stuff like that yeah. that we can do. And, Is there uh, any exciting collaborations that you can share with us? Anything that's really interesting? Uh, like the Vans yeah, thing. Yeah, I have a really so cool, cool one yeah. for Jeju too, actually. Yeah, you do? So um, we're releasing a collaboration gin with Toki Soju. Stop. Yeah, and oh, that's so, um, so cool. it's a Jeju gin. It's actually using what? a whole bunch of citrus this from is Jeju. So cool. um, and that will launch in June, um, actually. And so we haven't really it? announced it yet. Okay. I mean, Ooh. we've oh. talked about it a little bit, but we okay. haven't done too much uh, okay. marketing on it. We'll have yeah. to get a couple. I love gin. I'm oh, a big cool. fan this of is, gin. Yeah, his, yeah. His, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're working right yeah. now <laughs> on um, can we sell it like. Uh, we're, we're trying to put like a draft talk, like oh, yeah. basically yeah, yeah. a gin and tonic or a gin and soda on Something draft that's could, really yeah. easy to do oh, and then we'll sell it by the really bottles. Cool, yeah. I forget, I think we have 300 bottles is how much we oh, made. I'm so, so excited. not too, too much. Oh, um, my, put yeah. my name on one of those. We're going to have to get a couple yeah. of those bottles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's super good too. Yeah. We've been sampling it with some like the cocktail bars in Seoul mm -hmm. and there's a couple bars that are like, can this be my house gin? Oh. Like, can I use this for this? Like, cool. so, what is yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the art for that? That's... Uh, so yeah, the art for it is actually super cool too. Oh, wow. We reached out to, um, uh, I know her through some friends. She is kind of famous for being a tattoo artist. Her name's Mickey Kim. And okay. um, she, um, she does some really wild out there artwork. And um, so, yeah, I won't go too deep into okay. it. I'll let it release. Uh, I'll okay. let it release and see it. But like, she did some really wild artwork. It's very not Toki. It's very not okay. Magpie. Okay, it's that's, kind of its own that's important. Kind of thing, I would think. But, um, yeah. yeah. Where did so, the gin come from? Because we were just so talking about Toki. Uh, uh, so Toki Soju. They have uh, their brand is called Sunbi. Uh, their Sunbi Gin mm -hmm. and Vodka. That's a different series. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I was just hanging out with with. Um, brand one night and talking about like hey would this be possible to do a private label bottling and do something that's like you know very citrus forward he's like he's like dude i have that's, a recipe already oh, it's so all cool. using citrus gin already yeah. like try oh, wow. the the, the yeah. base and what that is yeah. and then we'll kind of go from there and that's so, so on. it's so uh, exciting yeah, yeah. super fun and yeah. they're kind of because it's our 10th anniversary we're really trying to like go out there a little bit more with what we can do with those mm -hmm. kind of collaborations so mm -hmm. that one and then in fall I have a really uh, interesting collaboration started where Eastlog uh, the clothing brand that does our sort of like internal stuff okay um, we're gonna do a collaboration with them where it's kind of based on like old workwear style stuff they do like a kind of let's say like heritage menswear oh, kind okay. of stuff so like a denim workers jacket with embroidery and stuff like this that should be pretty cool so that does sound so little um, something yeah we're hoping November that okay. will launch I think is that okay. one that's kind of like out there too but yeah work yeah. on some other stuff yeah. it's so exciting fantastic. I, yeah. I feel very lucky to have chosen to live in Korea at the time to see not only are we seeing um, politics change here but also uh, social Oh, sometimes I just lose my words. Yeah, yeah sure. but things have changed so much in the 10 years that I've lived here, you know, yep. with 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 everything. Yeah. But one of the really cool things I've just enjoyed is because I came from Denver where things were already happening. So I really, you can really watch the birth of so many things. Like you were talking about Toki. I mean, there is just so many, Korea is blossoming with people wanting to do ideas and yep. different things and take it to the next level and, and Toki Soju is certainly one of those yep. like, like that's just a yep. treat to sip yeah, on and yeah again I, I think you know, too like trying there's, to do there's something. a little bit like um you know I, I think talking about sort of the foreign impact on that mm -hmm. and what that relates to like you mm -hmm. know Bran is also you know he's uh Bran and Doug the, the two founders are both you know like um 
Doug is a is a Korean American and, and Brand is is a is a, a white American, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. But like it's kind of one of those things where sometimes it's just looking at something traditional in a different perspective mm -hmm. that kind of gives mm -hmm. it sort of like a, a kind of new breath or right. new life, you know, kind of right. doing that. Where taking soju and being very non traditional with it is mm -hmm. I think kind of like really helpful now mm -hmm. we're seeing a whole bunch of more stuff come right. through where right. like and I don't know it's not because of Toki it's not necessarily because of that but it did make people kind of think about it a little bit differently and open and the, yeah, yeah yeah and I, it, it's just so fun to see like you know and then you know having a brewery that you can come and tour like that's what Magpie did and then yeah. I told you before that we started recording I just finally was able to go see Toki in Seoul and yeah. that style I mean that's just we walked in we're like cool but then we looked at the menu and you just get this a uh, little bit of excitement and to be getting to see new things in a country sure. which mm, yeah. ha hasn't had that before. 100%, so like, you know, their 100%. cocktails, a beet cocktail. Oh, I, mean, I had a tomato cocktail the, there that the blew my mind. The cocktail scene in Seoul now is, is like one of the fastest growing globally. Like I forget so how exciting. many, they went from a zero in the top 50 mm -hmm. list to like this year, I think there's like mm -hmm. six or something mm -hmm. like that in the top 50 bars in Asia. Oh. And yeah. Um, yeah, cocktail scene is growing so fast and amongst just, other yeah. things. Like I think, what Amongst is it like the things. coffee culture too is like I think sure. we were here for the birth of the coffee culture and now Seoul yep. is considered one of the like the main coffee mm -hmm. culture cities yeah. in the world like with also well, and, and I just think and, that's so cool though yeah. that the magpie really was at the heart and the, the start of, of of so many things yep, exactly. yeah yeah it's really exciting yeah. so now that we're uh, we're just about done let's get to our our token our staple Jeju 5, Jeju 5. which is we're gonna ask you five questions <laughs> okay and Spit we fire. want you to answer them as truthfully and as quickly as possible. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. So, where on the island do you go to get away? Um, uh, we have a series of secret spots on the <laughs> island that we refuse to tell anybody you about. Can, yeah, I shouldn't say tell them about. Yeah. We refuse. We can only. The rule at Magpie mm -hmm. is you can only bring people there. Yeah, you, you can't, can't send them you pins. Can't give directions, you can't send yeah. pins. You can't do that. So you yeah. can bring people there. So yeah. they grow. They're not so secret. But like, like, this is like a Magpie. No, no, well, no. I mean, no, they're no, not no, even they, Magpie. They're they always. Rules, yeah, we, with, <laughs> they with had to be like with locals that took. Yeah, they're taught us about it. So like up near like. Uh, I love Donnako. Mm -hmm. um, I think Donnico's like going great. there off season is so cool. I mean, the water temperature is freezing no matter when you go, but Miserable. going when there's no yeah. one there mm -hmm. is the best. And we were talking about shared, you know, history in Ontario, mm -hmm. and like it reminds me of Ontario. It reminds mm -hmm. me of like being up north in Ontario, and mm -hmm. so I really love that spot. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we're both from Ontario. We're both oh, Canadians. 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 Yeah, Canadians. Yeah. Next question. Sure. You go to a mart. Mm -hmm. What's your go-to beverage that you pick up? Um, hmm, what is my go-to beverage? Uh, probably like. I don't know, like, a, are you talking alcohol or not? Yeah, alcohol? so you want. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Usually most people pick alcohol. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, like, uh, so do you, I would say, beer. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the, I forget the brand of it, but the pink bottle Makali is uh -huh. like the J. Oh, yeah. 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 So we learned a secret from Solhi, he used to be our operations yeah. manager. Yeah. She would look at the dates and find yeah. the yep. oldest date. That's yep. The yep. oldest date is yep. the funkiest bottle, yep. and so that's what we like the most. Yep. And so, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jeju Makali, yeah. well, most Makali has, only has like an expiry also, date of 10 days. Yeah. Yeah. So I always pick the, 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 the oldest, oldest one as well. Yeah. Yeah. And the green cap. That's my secret for me. You can't get it at the, uh, you have to go to the NH Mart. Oh, okay. the, green the, the green cap is only is... sold at mm -hmm. E-Mart mm -hmm. because the, they, they get them in bulk. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Oh, cool. But they get right, yeah. Price yeah. For them. yeah. Cool. So, number three, so the, uh, yeah. the coast, Hala or Orum? <sighs> I mean, uh, I don't know. I would say uh, coast, I guess. I don't know. I really like the, like, my corner of the island is our sort of like the northeast corner. Mm -hmm. Actually, all the way down to Songsan. I love that stretch of coast, but I ride my bike a lot. And so mm -hmm. I like to go over on the way there and then coast on the way back mm -hmm. is usually what I do. And so, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess, like, again, being Canadian, I'm not much of a beach guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I, I like the beach, obviously, but I like the fresh water better. I'm okay. more of a lake guy. Okay. So, but yeah, getting in the forest is really nice. Okay. Um, I actually haven't climbed Hala, so I don't, I haven't made the trip up there. Fair enough. So, yeah, I'm a little mixed, I guess. I'm mm -hmm. kind of, but I'd say, I guess, coast is what I, I, I enjoy okay. cruising the coast okay. yeah. what's something you think uh, you know about Jeju that our listeners wouldn't know hmm, I don't know yeah. um, you know I we were talking about this too a little bit where I end up like in my sort of like Bermuda Triangle like there's spots where I go to and that's where I kind of <laughs> yeah. end up um, I mean I do think that um, I mean, the food in Jeju is some of the best food in the country, I think. Um, mackerel sashimi is, if you don't eat mackerel sashimi, <laughs> you're missing out on life. Like, okay. that's kind of the best okay. thing, I think, that okay. I've... And that's kind of a recent discovery. Do you go to Tapdong in that area, the, the, um, the street, Oh, the I forget. Street, uh, 
the best spot I've been to is actually, I forget the city, but it's okay. down in like the southern west corner. Okay. I forget okay. that little like fishing village there, yep. but there's like some famous macro sashimi spot there that's, okay. that's amazing. Well, there's another one here. up in AWOL too that okay. I didn't get to go to, but I did a cycling trip with some people and we split into barbecue and sashimi uh -huh. and I went on the barbecue uh -huh. team, but they said it's like one of the best. Okay, too, good to know. Anyways, yeah, that's awesome. That's macro, okay, okay. If there was something you would change about the island, what would it be? Mm. Uh, I mean, I guess public transportation. I mean, it's it's hard because it's an island and it's rural and remote, mm -hmm. but it takes so long to get places if you're mm -hmm. using public transportation. Well, you know I they're mean, getting a tram system here, right? Are they? I didn't know this. Well, you'd know well, that if you followed us on Insta yeah, Instagram, yeah, 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 yeah. Twitter, yeah. Sure. all that stuff. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. But I think that proposed. that's, I mean, yeah. something like that would be amazing because mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I know a lot of friends when I bring them down here, we talk about, you've got to come to Jeju, it's so awesome. And they're just like, okay, well, you know, like, well, we're going to take the bus to get to here. And it's just like, it's almost <laughs> impossible to get around the island yeah. we had uh Hyo Jung on a couple weeks ago about and she's from nomad her and she said the biggest issue that uh women travelers uh solo women travelers mm -hmm. have on the island is transportation right. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. so and it's so interesting because it's changed so much in the 10 years that i lived here so when other people say oh transportation is bad i'm always like oh is it no i think it's quite good and they're like no nope, no nope, still quite bad but mm. that's how bad it was in, yeah. in the beginning yeah. and so like the change yeah we'll, we'll see yeah i'm trying to think i mean i I don't what? know. I always like the little undiscovered, the quiet places, but the, they never stay quiet for long. Yeah. And that's like, that's why it's, you know, any change is like, that's what's, it's, that's I, inevitable. I, I guess, call my know? secret beaches, the secret, not so secret beach. Yeah. You know, that's where I am today. Yeah. yeah. But there used the to be a time. Yeah, the beach. unsecreted. There used to be a time you could yeah. just, you would go, I would go camping for a week and not see one soul. But and you, uh, you just can't. Remember when like, I, I mean, I don't know if you guys showed us or whatnot, mm -hmm. but like the sort of the side beach at Humdog. Yeah. It used to be yeah. virtually yes. only filled with foreigners and there was no one else there. We literally called it the foreigner beach yeah. and now it's like it's just as busy <laughs> oh, as the main beach if, if not even more so because of it's such a small beach yeah. so then it has that appearance yeah. of well when i i remember going this is just a side note i remember going and they were uh renting the chairs out yeah and i was like that's it now it's, it's, it's officially done <laughs> i, I was like hate I, yeah. I hate that yeah. so i saw it i looked down and we put a mat down they're like no 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 you can't because this is where we're gonna sit i was like Okay, and that's one more thing crossed off the list. Yeah, but it's yeah. you know it's bound to happen. Sure. It's bound to happen. Sure. But yeah. yeah. Well, Eric, thank you so much for no agreeing to be on our. I hope it was as much fun for you as. Oh, sure. No, I had a great time as always. Thank always you so time. much. Always yeah, a pleasure. Yeah. So, uh, most important question: Is the tap open yet? They are. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. All right. Well, we I see some go. people trickling in. So. <laughs> yeah, um, we we yeah. gets to go. We got to get an afternoon beer on. Yeah, it's a sure, perfect certainly. spring day. Cool. Thanks again, yeah. Eric. Awesome. No problem. Another good interview checked off. I I am just always so thrilled with the with the quality of uh, people we get. Mm. They're you know. Even Eric, he just is so at ease. And I, you know, our style here on the podcast is, as we always say, is very conversational. Mm. And yet again, we have another interview that was just like a bunch of old friends talking and, you know, catching up and, you know, informing people about things they didn't know about. Yeah. Well, how many owners of the, uh, of Magpie are there? I don't know if you mentioned it. It sounded like there's, there's a few. Yeah, we talked about that, like in, in sort of the beginning, I mm -hmm. think, uh, you know, they have and then they have investors. So at this point right now, I believe there's four owners. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's if he would approve of the way I'm saying that, but right. four original members, and then they had uh, some investors come in. Very cool. Very a beautiful spot, too. He has two spots oh, on Jeju, just so people oh know. I have the tub on my. I got. I finally got my first uh, sunburn of a uh, spring slash summer by sitting out having a beer with you after the after we recorded. We had an amazing macaroni and cheese pizza new on the menu, mm -hmm. and we had a couple beers. And um, later that day, I was uh, hanging out with some friends, and uh, as soon as I walked into the room, my friend was like, "Oh my God, Alexis, are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, why?" And she's like, "You're so mm -hmm. red." And then as soon as she said that, I felt the heat radiating, but not. Until, not oh. until someone else acknowledged it. But are you feeling okay now? Did you put some yeah. olive oil, aloe vera um, on yourself? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm drenched in some Innisfree aloe vera, the best the best one on that you can get on in Korea. But yeah, I was. Uh, it was funny that I didn't even notice until someone pointed it out. And uh, yeah, but that's how beautiful of a day it was. Yeah. I'm so ready for all the activities, and we might as well do a shout out that the next activity, which we didn't really say on the podcast, is going to be June second, uh, um, a Saturday. It's going to be a 
Barks and Brew, the second episode of Barks and Brew, which is uh, raising money to get uh, dogs and other animals adopted oh. and taken care of on the island. Barks and Brew, what is that? I'm not familiar. Barks, B A R K S. The one last, uh, oh gosh, last. So, you know what? I don't even know. <laughs> the end of fall, maybe? Uh -huh. um, so this is the second edition, and it's just basically a way to bring attention to uh, adopt, don't shop sort of atmosphere, and then as well as to bring attention to how much work people do on the to save wild mm. animals, oh, mm, stray animals. That's right. a better way to say it, yeah, yeah, on the island. So it just is, it's a good money raiser and Magpie is always generous about opening their door to community okay. members that are trying to do something. So that's going to be a day of music. I think it's two o'clock to 10 o'clock. And that, which, which one? Which, which that? location? Oh, the brewery. At the brewery, okay. We'll put it on our stories to remind people to give them a little bit more advertising because it's such a great uh, such a great thing. It'll be a wonderful day of community, especially since we don't have any um, restrictions anymore on group sizes and we can be outside a magpie with no masks. Uh -huh. But do keep your masks at the ready because you do have to put them on when you go enter the building. Oh, good call. Good. Yes. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, it's very easy to actually forget yeah. you're sitting outside after a few beers, but yeah, uh, I just think really just knowing that that date is so soon right after the interview, just really in my head, like I, I, I love my pie. I love uh -huh. what they mean to the community, but just the fact that they've done so many charities, anytime I ask them to chip in or to do something, they have always been generous with their with their wallets or with their goods to help mm -hmm. out causes and to give to people that need so just another example of how much they give back to the community that they're in yeah i'm not surprised uh, after meeting that was my first meeting with eric and That's they right. seem like uh yeah. like good people you know yeah. that and he made a point of saying like I, i'm not going to remember his three c's but the community is is their motto you know the, the what did he say craftsmanship community I'm, and I'm culture yeah, and culture, right? I just know that uh, they're just in in each in each town they they are in each mm. city. They've just done so much. So yeah, I, I have I, I have a lot of time for anybody who's yeah. like who's has a company or an initi like an initiative or something mm -hmm. where they have community. It's like a big part of it. I, I it really bothers me when I see you know stores that don't cater to everyone, uh, and I'll just leave it at that. Uh, mm. Or like I. I <laughs> You, you you know I I I'm a big community supporter in that way. You serve everyone. You support yep. everyone. And I think you know just the fact that that's part of their mantra, their motto. Like, and you it you you can't question it with them. You know, it's it's obvious. It's in everything they do and everything they give back to. Um, even during COVID, when they were struggling, they were still mm -hmm. trying to help. You know, other businesses and suicide awareness and all those things. But, mm -hmm. anyways, I do hope that everyone enjoyed the interview because it was it was very interesting to know a bit more about uh, a place that. You know, especially mm. for the forest, we spend a lot of time there. So it's nice to know some more information about it. Yeah, and if you guys have questions or anything you'd like to ask us about, uh, right. feel free to email us at meyouandjeju at gmail.com or hit us up on our Instagram, which is just meyouandjeju, or on Twitter, which is the Jeju at the Jeju Podcast, or search me, you and Jeju. We're all up there. So. Yeah. Make sure. think don't we? we we're just we got our hands full yeah yeah we're all over the place so uh <laughs> you make... list it all up i'm like damn we, <laughs> we were like, okay <laughs> yeah and so uh, that's been another episode uh thank you very much all of you for listening especially for this length because it's like it's been an hour that long interview is one of our it's up there with one of our longer interviews i'd have to say good to know yeah, and so our music is by Jason Lisko, Art Sarah Hodgkiss, our uh, wonderful website, which we encourage you to go visit, and we got links up there. There'll be links to the address to Magpie and on our website. Their Instagram, so you can keep up with what latest beers they're dropping and then what kind of changes they have in their menu. Yep. So their Instagram is definitely the best way to go for that. And of course, we're gearing up for event season. So if you mm. want to know what events they're hosting, which are amazing, he, are, he kind of alluded to some of them in our interview, make sure you check out their Instagram. Yeah, and that website is by our, uh, the, our wonderful internet guru, uh, Jay Chi. And uh, my co-host is Alexis Joy, and I'm Daryl Coots. Thank you so much for listening. See you soon.